uh, the sanctions, are they working? The, the most recent sanctions, <clears throat> and these are the sanctions the, against the Russian oligarchs, uh, against the tycoons that they put in place uh, about a month ago, were like a, a neutron bomb going, on, going, <clears throat> going off over Moscow. These sanctions truly hit Putin right between the eye because it is going after his own money being held by these oligarchs. It was going after the biggest, richest guys in the country. And he's paying attention now. We're talking about Oleg Deripaska of Rusal. He, of course, was the gigantic shareholder of the world's largest aluminum company. It didn't take long for that stock to collapse. It didn't take long for Putin to obviously indicate somehow that this has become a problem. So when President Trump says no one's been harder than, than the Trump administration on Russia, is he right? Does this give more credence because it appears Russia is bending because it doesn't want to break? Uh, this, this is exactly right. I mean, I've been pounding the table for 10 years trying to get the oligarchs to be sanctioned. And it finally happened a month ago. And, and um, all, all previous actions of any administration against Russia haven't been very effective until this last set of sanctions. And this does work. And you can see it works because Putin normally gets all blustering and, and retaliating and so on and so forth. He hasn't said a word since then. Unbelievable. So uh, there are other aspects of the Trump sanctions and Trump actions. Ukraine. Uh, certainly the, the United States has sent some real help weaponry to Ukraine after Russia tried to encroach and ch stole the chunk of Crimea right off, it snapped it right off. Uh, is that something that the Obama administration ever kind of delved into? So, so, the, so Obama didn't want to supply offensive weapons to Ukraine, and Ukraine was being invaded by Russia, mm -hmm. and, and um, the Trump administration has. And so it's, um, you know, putting aside all partisanship, um, the, uh, uh, the Trump administration has done oligarch sanctions, they, they supplied offensive weapons to Ukraine, and they put some very high-value targets um, uh, on the Magnitsky list, people like the, the, the uh, general prosecutor's son, a bunch of other people. And so... Um, this is, uh, I, I can see Russia squirming as a result of the administration's policies today. Do you know this uh, Alexei Kudrin, who is now going to be brought back to help stabilize the Russian economy, which some say, you know, they sure have a lot of bluster, a lot of bark, but very little bite, maybe an economy as small as Italy's right now? Well, this is complete nonsense. So, so <clears throat> Vladimir Putin has, has been involved in a state-sponsored terrorist attack using chemical weapons in the U.K., mm -hmm. And now he's going to bring, bring back a guy who speaks English to hopefully stabilize the economy. I think he needs to stop attacking the West, and then his economy will stabilize. The idea of bringing an English-speaking guy that some people like in the West is not going to stabilize his economy. So you would give Trump what kind of grade when it comes to at least putting the Russians under thumb? Because people look and say, he's never said a bad word about Vladimir Putin. There's this Russia investigation that so far has really not revealed anything uh, hard-bitten. So... Where do you look at this? Well, the whole thing confuses me because Trump does put out these, these tweets that I find offensive saying Vladimir Putin's a good guy. I can't agree with him on that at all. However, his administration, um, uh, Pompeo, Mattis, um, Nikki Haley, and all these people are absolutely a, as tough as nails on Russia. So I, I, I don't know wh how, where, where, you, where, where you create the balance, but it's tough. What if, and this is an important question, and this is just my concept of trading and negotiating. He says he's the deal maker in chief. What if Donald Trump somehow trades away the Magnitsky Act and says, because Putin hates it, it keeps a lot of Russians out of doing business in the United States. What if he trades it away if the Russians will vacate Syria or stop in Syria? Well, fortunately, it's untradeable. In, in order for the Magnitsky Act to go away, it would require an act of Congress. And, and I've been in Washington and there is not a single member of we Congress. We put up the four senators who supported the Magnitsky Act. This was Joe Lieberman, this is at the time, Joe Lieberman, John McCain, Roger Wicker, and Ben Cardin. So a bipartisan group made this happen. And, and, and I can tell you that with the exception of one member of Congress, just one member of Congress, every single other member of Congress supports the Magnitsky Act. It will not be repealed, no matter what deals may or may not be made. It's wonderful to have you here exclusively. Bill Browder. Thank Everybody you. should read the book, Red Notice. It is a stunning, horrific story with at least some redemption here. Thank you so much.